up guys, David one, two and two, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, the only day that we apparently have. We are starting the other half of my special edition series of some of the biggest videos on my channel. Looking back at some of these old ones, especially the one we are redoing today, um, I'm pretty sure I recorded those with some Walmart poster board that was like just green with green duct tape behind me and it's just with an old program that's real bad and it's time to fix these. Also, there was just something about that last video. Something that people seemed to think that I had forgotten. Despite the fact the card didn't exist when the video was made. Wonder what that could have been. So without further ado, let's look at the top 10 best rituals in Yu-Gi-Oh! Number 10 is Revenge Dread Executor. Executor? You must construct additional pylons. Big Bad Zombie Man is level 8 dark with 3k attack and that special zombie zero defense with a absolute wall of text for a card effect. What's this spawny boy do? You can ritual summon this thing with any of the Vendred ritual spells because of course you can. It's a it's a Vendred ritual monster. This card becomes Revendred Slayer while on the field because that's the, the deck centers around Revendred Slayer, so any of the other ritual monsters have to be called him so they can be supported by the rest of the deck. Sure. A la Dark Magician stuff. While this ritual summoned monster is on the field, your opponent cannot target cards you control except this one. Neat. Basically shutting off all of your opponent's targeting effects is a pretty solid little piece of protection, although it does paint a giant bullseye on this bad boy. However, because he's got that big old bullseye, he at least floats into another Vendred card for your hand if he's destroyed by battle or card effect. We're using Executor here as the poster boy for the Vendred archetype at a solid but respectable number 10, simply because the deck has had problems performing in the past. Haven't we all? What? However, that does not take away the fact that the deck has got a pretty solid artwork aesthetic, and if it is left to its own devices, can make a pretty nasty board. You might be thinking that this guy doesn't sound too overwhelming. Like I said, he doesn't protect himself, which is weird for monsters with protection. However, he does gain effects based on the Vendred main deck monsters used for his material. Get him some quick play banishes, and then there's one that gives himself some targeting protection, which means that now nothing can get targeted, which... It's like just waiting for kaijus and stuff, but hey, you know what? That's at least something. And it's probably because of that one small aspect why this is only number 10 and why the deck does have a problem because sure, if everything goes right, you can make this un invincible dude, but you gotta get the right material and it's a little awkward. So I mean, the whole deck's kind of a two card combo on top of the already two card combo that is rituals and just, ah, but that artwork though. We're probably going to not harp on the ritual monsters too much for all being two card combos because they're all like that. So it's going to sound like a broken record. So we're going to try to look at these guys kind of based on their own merits in a little bit of a bubble as it were. Because yeah, rituals are just a, a, a problem of card advantage. Which is probably why Baroness is only number nine. Must be ritual summon, can't be special summon other ways. Neat. And you can ritual summon it with its own ritual spell. Go figure. If you've noticed that uh, down above this ridiculous card effect, you'll notice it says Spirit. That's neat. We don't get that type of effect very often, much to my dismay. I love spirits. However, it does have this nifty effect that when it gets Ritual Summoned, it can spin up to three of your opponent's spell or traps back to their deck. And then, and then, you can special summon one spirit monster from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions, because you have to, because none of them are allowed to be special summoned, so you have to cheat. That spirit monster does have to be level 4 or lower, but however, all the best spirits are level 4 or lower, so who really cares? Although it would be cool to get the big dragon thing with all the heads. But it would not be a spirit monster if it didn't do this stupid thing. If this card was special summoned this turn during the end phase, return it to your hand. Boo! Ritual of Monsters are already poor card advantage inherently, so having it bounce to your hand is a big waste. However, it does at least summon two Shino Bird tokens to your side of the field to help at least, you know, give you some advantage. It's kind of cute. You could obviously have given this spot to her buddy, the Baron, because it does the same thing but with monsters. However, I think the back row removal spinning it into the deck is just pretty neat. 
Oh, Demise Archetype, everyone seems to forget about you. However, OG Demise, King of Armageddon, is still my favorite. You can summon this card with End of the World. What a great name for a ritual spell. Pay 2k, destroy all other cards on the field. Easy, it's crisp, it's clean. Mm. Not all that other gibberish that his retrain has, which probably makes him objectively better. But nah, I like this one. Plus, I think level being a level 8 is, uh, I think, a little less awkward. I like the level 8. I don't need to sit here and tell you guys why absolutely just obliterating every other card on the field is a potentially powerful effect. <laughs> Which, the only real problem with it is, it is an ignition effect, so even if you cheese this thing out on your opponent's turn with one of the very few but still existing cards that allow you to ritual summon on an opponent's turn, and that doesn't really help you that much, but, but, can't take away from the fact that he's, he's, he's basically Black Rose Dragon, kinda, I guess Black Rose Dragon's kind of more him, because I think he came first. This guy is pretty solid. Holy crap, if you'd asked me a year or two ago if I was to remake this list, I would even consider putting any of the megaliths on here, I would have laughed at you, chortled even. I've tried the deck, it was clumsy AF. Seemingly trying to fix the idea that uh, rituals are inherently two-card combos by needing a ritual monster and a ritual spell, and that's just completely ignoring you also need ritual material, but we're gonna try to be, we're gonna try to be generous. By making it so that the ritual monsters summon the other ritual monsters. That's kind of cute. The issue was, like, you needed a ritual summon the first one first in order to use its effect to summon the rest. So, there was this kind of a choke point, and it was clumsy, and yeah. But with a couple more cards of support, it really just kind of plugged all the holes in the deck. And now we have a functioning competitive deck. The bones were there. I I should have had faith. And Megalith Oach is going to be the one that we use to represent the deck because it's the level four. And it has a quick effect to allow you to ritual summon, which is just really, really neat. A big problem that ritual monsters had was that they tend to do a lot of their playing on their own turn and don't do a ton of interacting on your opponent's turn because most ritual spells are normal spell cards. So having a quick play monster effect that allows them to do it is pretty solid. Also, I think Fool might also be able to be kind of shoved into this spot because this thing allows you to ritual summon from your deck. Yeah, as a quick effect. You know, when Konami actually wants to plug a hole in a deck, they can actually do it. There's nothing stopping them. <laughs> Ritual summon from the deck. Damn. But yeah, the whole deck has managed to turn itself around doing completely 180. I am super impressed. And you know what? We were all pulling for you guys. This next card is a funny option because uh, I feel like it is a good card in its own deck, but as many cards in this game do, it, it falls it falls to being used in everyone else's deck as well. Cyber Angel Ben 10. Are those wads? To be fair, wads wash out. That gigantic d you put in my Okay, time out. Who really cares what this thing's on-field effect is? It does something with battle damage. I don't know. Yeah, if you kill something in battle with this thing, you can you can burn them for the monster you killed's defense. Who cares? But nah, it's that last effect. If this card is tributed, you can add a light fairy monster from your deck to your hand. One light fairy. Wow. Well, most fairies are light, so that's pretty generic searching right there. And we don't even get a level restriction? You know how many good light fairies there are? Archlord Christian and Vanity's Ruler are some really, really solid targets that come to mind. And you also notice that the thing is a level 6. You need to keep that in mind. It is also a fairy. Keep that in mind. For later. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. Not only that, but I'd probably be remiss to mention that the deck that this thing is from, the Cyber Angels, also saw some success in Duel Links. So, hey, you know what? You did all right, kid. Uh, miss? Sometimes we find cards in this game that we forgot about. Cards that you wish you had time to go back and add to old lists. This is not one of them. Incantation Chalice Slime. This is an odd one because it in of itself doesn't seem like it does a hell of a lot. It's just kind of an engine-y extender card. But given the fact that it's in one of the best ritual supporting archetypes there are in the game that literally can just be mushed into anything, then you gotta say to yourself, okay, we've got something going on here. You can reveal this card in your hand, discard one card, and then summon an incantation monster from your deck. 
And during the end phase, if you didn't ritual summon, after resolving these effects, you take some you take some burn damage, but who cares? Summoning an incantation from your deck doesn't sound that great. Their levels are all over the place, their types are all over the place. Why, why would we care? Because the incantation is going to add like any ritual spell or ritual monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand, depending on which one you get. The two things you would want to get your ritual stuff from. You don't really care about what's in your hand. You care about what's in your deck and your grave because what's in your hand is garbage when you're playing rituals, like without fail. Three copies are relinquished, no ritual spell. Darn. So being able to basically add will to a box, the missing part of your two card combo anytime you need it is just really, really valuable. It also does have a field effect which allows you to send an incantation monster from your field or hand to the graveyard to pop a card your opponent controls, specifically a monster, which is a kind of neat control effect, but that's not really why you care about this thing. Also, doesn't he just look so comfy? At this this line, not not the chalice. The chalice looks like it's pretty put out by this whole thing. There we are, my old friend, Herald of Perfection. Ah, I miss ye, oh negaty boy. You make this thing with Ben 10. You have to treat a car like you treat a woman. Like like I said, it, it's, it's search. It's good advantage. Feels good, man. Feels good, man. Yes, that tribute effect on Ben 10 applies to when it is used as ritual material because a ritual material is considered a tribute. They did it on purpose. They did not expect you to summon Ben 10 and then sack it for summon skull. At least not this summon skull. Maybe this summon skull. This summon skull's got dope ass artwork. But he's not on the list. He's not very good. <laughs> anyway, Herald of Perfection. During either player's turn when your opponent activates a spell, trap, or monster effect, you can send a fairy-type monster from your hand to graveyard to negate the activation and destroy that uh, card thing. It. Destroy it. Many new players and even old veterans who haven't seen the card in a while have been felled by the defense position terror that is Herald of Perfection because they fail to notice that it is not a... Once per turn? Hell, it's not even once per chain. As long as I got the crap in my hand, I can negate literally everything you do. And his big brother, Herald of Ultimateness, is not a bad option either for this spot because it, it does a little, it negates a little bit more. But being like max level is a bit annoying to make. So we're gonna go with the classic, the perfect, perfection even, Herald of Perfection. If it wasn't Alentheo's like signature card, it'd be mine. This is this is like troll incarnate. I love this card. That's fine, I like me some toad. Hey, speaking of water-based archetypes that'll be on this list, there's more than one. Avishki Gust Kraken. Gust Grush Kraken. Yeah, this thing's at three, finally. I, I think people like totally forgot this thing was on the on the on the forbidden limited list and they just put it three and no one cared But you know what that kind of means something for your locals or something I don't know fun aside Gishkis were a competitive strategy back in their day And were clearly the basis for modern ritual based archetypes being that I think they're kind of like the first fully realized ritual based archetype so much so that even like the cards from their archetype got retrained in a new one newer and i figured we'd put gust kraken on the list because hand loops are fun when this card is ritual summoned look at two random cards from your opponent's hand shuffle one back in the deck Ooh, it's not even a discard it's a shuffly hand loop that stuff's really gone when you shuffle it and you're also getting some information too because you're not just shuffling one random card out of their hand you're looking at at two and shuffling one, so you at least know one card in your opponent's hand. Gishki's used to loop this thing until you had no card, and I guess presumably speaking, I think you could do it. I think hand traps are gonna be a bit of a problem, but I, I think in theory you can do it. I've seen that combo in a long time. For the respect that the Gust Kraken deserves, we're gonna give a nice, comfortable number three. And finally, we come to a card that I feel really does truly deserve to be on this list. And it's really sad that the card didn't exist in the time that the previous list was made because I most certainly would have included it. Seravis, the Ancient and Ascended. Level seven, Light Dragon Ritual Monster. Ooh, uh, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Level eight might've been a little better, but seven's a good level for dragon stuff too, so I feel like this is pretty good. Not only that, it's a hand trap, which, uh, you know what? That's pretty novel for rituals because, like I said before, half the time you have eight copies of one and not eight copies of the other, so it's just a bunch of dead shit in your hand, so if you can use it for something, it's pretty solid. 
When your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a monster you control, you can discard this card to negate that activation. Nice, card or effect. That's some blanket protection right there. It's a damn shame that it doesn't destroy what it's negated, but sometimes, you know, your opponent needed that Castell or Cerberus to go through, and it still being on board isn't really doing them much good because its effect is what mattered. Its attack power certainly doesn't. And being a hand trap means this is an interesting choice for your Herald of Arclight search, because when Arclight negates its one thing and goes to grave, uh, if you're running a copy of this in your deck, you don't even need the stupid ritual spell in order to ritual summon it. You just have the arc light go off in the grave, search this thing, and you got another negation. That's pretty solid. If anything, that might even be a better use of the card than actually summoning it. Although it does have a really solid on-field effect. When your opponent would special summon a monster, quick effect, you could return this card to your hand, negate that special summon, and if you do, Banish that monster, ooh. Yeah, this card's like way underrated. I love this freaking thing. If he was part of an archetype, it'd be broke, but he's just some weird random pack filler ritual monster. I don't know. And it looks like a Digimon. <laughs> ah, see, it feels really good to put up a big dragon on this list. I, I, I really was, I really thought it was missing that. All right, before we get to number one, we do have an honorable mention. Um. There are better ones in the card pool. There are certainly worse ones in the card pool, but I gotta give, I gotta give a shout out to my homie, Relinquished. The OG ritual monster that actually does something as opposed to just be a beat stick, which still has, even in the modern game of Yu-Gi-Oh, okay spot removal. It's targeted, sure, but it's non-destruction. Targeting your opponent's monster and having it equipped to your monster is a pretty, Still a pretty good way of dealing with something. Granted, uh, I, you know, I, I think his big brother Thousand Eyes restricts a little better because you can grab him with instant fusion as opposed to having to run a goofy ritual engine. But, but, being level one, being a dark, being a spellcaster, zero, zero, there's a lot you can do with that. <laughs> Relinquished man, he's, he can still, he can still hang with, he can still hang with the big boys. Yeah. And we also have a dishonorable mention. I wonder what it could be. It's not something I've been dancing around the whole video. It's not something that people have been bugging me for years now, despite the fact the video is older than the card. I wonder what card it could be. The dishonorable mention for this list is Blue Eyes, Chaos Max Dragon. Y'all can suck it. <laughs> Screw this stupid card. Nah, I'm just screwing with you. It's okay. It, it's okay. You know that old saying where they're like, you know, I was born too late to explore the world, but I was born too early to explore the, the universe or whatever? That's Chaos Max Dragon. Had he been on the old list, he probably would have been up at the top somewhere because, you know, at the time, he's a little hard to deal with. Nowadays, we've gotten more and more and more ways of getting rid of him, so now he ends up as, I guess, kind of a joke mention on this list, so feels bad, man. If, if you want to put one of the Max guys on the list, though, as some sort of pseudo honorable mention, I think his actual, his Dark Magician counterpart here, uh, Magician Black Chaos Max, is actually probably more worth a mention, because I think I think the Megaliths actually used him, and, like, they can get him to go off on your opponent's turn, because they can, like, summon stuff. It, it, it's kind of cool, I suppose. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. And now we get to number one. Um, I don't know how this would ever have been anything but obvious because it was a tier zero format, Necros. Granted, Necros are probably not what they used to be. Oh, gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. And are essentially at full power except for the Jin. And the fact they kind of don't do anything really does bring up to the question was, was it always just the Jin lock the whole time and not really the deck? And I would hazard a kinda. The deck is still really, really consistent, and in Yu-Gi-Oh, I think that is probably more important than power ceiling in most cases. Most decks have some wombo combo play that they can do that can win them a game if everything goes right, regardless of how crappy that deck really is. Power ceiling is very rarely a problem for a deck. However, consistency, now that can be a problem. If in every 
one in in a hundred duels, I can make my stupid combo. My deck's not very good. <laughs> Necros don't have that problem. Everything searches everything, so it's just like free. And with Unicorn here back at three, uh, you now no longer have to make the awful, awful Sophie's choice of do I summon the Unicorn or do I use it to recur stuff in the grave because that sucks. But uh, I think I'm gonna give the spot officially to Unicorn anyway because being a walking skill drain for extra deck monsters is pretty freaking solid. And despite the fact that it's level four, I mean, you can't know it's not right, but it is level four, for 2300, it's big enough to be annoying. But not only that, but the Necros in general just are completely well rounded. You got removal with Trishula, you got battle protection with Valk, which is honestly something that many decks, even that are tier one, don't really get. And sometimes it's actually nice. They can search their whole freaking deck with Colossalus and Brianak, have fun cheese with something like Decisive Armor, and a really, really, really broken and almost impossible to use boss monster in Sophia that no one runs. <laughs> oh, and then a whole slew of main deck monsters that people forget even exist. But the most important thing you need to remember is Colossalus searches a trap card that doesn't exist. Anyway, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I certainly did. Unless, of course, you're a Blue Eyes fan, and then it was probably instant dislike and unsubscribe. <laughs> and remember, guys, if you don't troll the better who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. The Destiny Board tells me that you should subscribe to the channel, or you can watch some of these other videos. Now excuse me, my Millennium Ring has detected another Millennium Item. Oh, it's... it's just Merrick. Akora, did you remember to get milk? We're out of milk. This milk is bad. It was terrible.